Welcome to Advert Talks. So in continuation to our series of Star Talks, today we have a very young and dynamic lawyer based out of Australia. The interesting part over here is she began her law career in India and then eventually she shifted her base and she eventually she is pursuing her career in Australian law. So on this new series of Star Talk, we will be trying to seek some very significant answers relating to how to become an international lawyer. So today we have with us Manvita Gandhi with us. So welcome Manvita on Advert Talks. Thank you Mr. Vasudev for inviting me to Star Talks. Uh, I look forward to chatting with you today. Yeah. And hopefully so, share my life story. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, adding to this, my first question to this, as every lawyer would like to know, that how to build up your career, being an Indian, going to abroad, and then establishing yourself and building a professional career right over there, especially in the field of law. Okay, so um, I completed my law degree in India in 2018. Okay. And uh, then I worked in India for about a year and a half almost okay. two years and then during covid uh, i was looking I, I think uh, before covid i was looking for uh, options to move you know to a different country hmm. then i found out uh, australia but uh, in australia the process itself is a bit long okay and not as easy as giving an exam and moving there okay it requires studying again okay so the main process is you basically choose a state that okay. you want to go in Australia. Okay. And then uh, you speak to their uh, legal board, which okay. is similar to our councils. Hmm. And you, you know, apply with your Indian degree and all the other work experience qualifications. Okay. And then they assess your degree. They give you what is called an assessment statement. Okay. Okay. And that involves some subjects that you have to study again. Okay. So then you basically apply to a university get you know complete those subjects qualify get a degree okay and then you need to do what is called a practical legal training okay that is about 75 days of work experience under an australian lawyer okay and after that you can really apply for admission and then you get admitted as a lawyer so uh manvita the practical points which i would like to ask is that how to apply for it as simple as being a lay uh, lay man a student who's listening to it, how to apply for it or how to understand which states are approaching and which states are approaching, uh, taking uh, such students in a positive direction. Okay, so one part of it is getting migration advice, which okay. I am not qualified to give, but yeah, yeah. that is That's, just how, which yeah. visa you will apply for and what will happen to yeah. you. Yeah. But yeah. the leading part is every state in Australia has, you know, their own bar councils okay. with different legal his board is in WA. There is a law society in New South Wales. Okay. So some people choose to go to a state. Some people okay. have relatives, family in some okay. state they want to go there. Okay. Some otherwise have which state has a better migration option, which state okay. you know keep you for longer, those ideas. But essentially you just choose a state you want to go to. You can choose more. You can apply to all the states you as you want and yeah. then see which one gives you the less subjects. Yeah. But the easiest way to apply is go to their websites. Yeah. If you think I can share a list of their websites. That's yeah, definitely. Easy. Apply to their, uh, you know, just go on their website. They all have, some have online forms, some have paper forms, but you literally apply, fill that form in, attach your Indian degree, mark sheet and all those things and just send it to them and they will get back to you by email. Okay. So it's okay. rather easy. So, so perfectly fine. As you rightly stated that, there is there are multiple information prevalent over there writing uh, finding a good uh, immigration lawyer and then eventually finding your own state and getting along this so after working for years in india as well as in australia on the practical side what differences do you feel i think it's very useful that i had the indian work experience i would say because yeah. the work itself i don't find it very difficult over here okay the work is quite straightforward okay the processes are the same for everything okay but uh, work wise it's not that different it's just that the family court system so i work in family law mostly okay. 
okay so the family court we go to the family court very often but okay. it's very informal as compared okay. to india okay the biggest difference i would say is that they use very simple english okay they don't use the uh, british old school english that we use in india okay okay it's one very big difference they write very simple like informalish letters to each other okay so that is the big difference other than that uh, working wise here there is a lot of focus on the client giving it you know their opinion to you on what has to be done okay okay it's not that they come to you in the first on the first day and give you some information and then you work so you are not really an advocate here you are more just a lawyer who's listening to them and doing what they are saying okay so of course giving legal advice but so, so you um, to getting understanding to this any individual who wants to pursue his career especially in australian law and getting uh, get, want to get into become an australian attorney number one have a basic knowledge of english right number yes to understand the client's need as well as over there the priority as well as client servicing also plays a very important role what i think so yes i would say uh, having communication skills okay having some sort of understanding of the other person circumstance is very very important okay. because you are interacting a lot with your client okay so especially okay. in family law because your client is a person in okay. commercial law of course sometimes your client is a company it okay. is not that you know emotional in that sense but still you are still interacting with people a lot okay you should have a good uh, email writing ethic okay there has to be a good uh, writing there has to be good communication and i would say just generally you know being able to tell your client and manage their expectation as you go with the case okay so uh, as you rightly stated that now uh, as you being and you started your practicing practice majorly in the family law what area of law do you feel are have the similarities as well as what area of law especially in the family law are completely different okay so the biggest difference in family law in india and anywhere else in the world is that it is just a general application law it is not religion or personal laws involved so there is only one family law that exists okay. you don't have okay. two different fields okay then the other main thing is that over here a big difference is that there is a concept of no fault divorce okay which basically means that there is uh, you don't need to tell the court why you divorced each other or why you want to leave each other you just oh. come to the court and say we want to leave each other and that's oh. enough okay of course there are other criteria you have to meet and what are the you know, usual what are the timelines of all these family matters basically in divorce matter um so that is one very big difference that, that in australia you don't settle your property and children's issues at the time of divorce generally okay okay so you can be so there are two different ways there are uh, divorced like married couples okay when they divorce from the date of divorce they have 12 months to apply okay. for property matters okay okay parenting matters they can have any time in their life whenever they that's want a, that's okay okay and uh, for de facto relations which are people which is live in relationships okay uh de facto relationships they have 2 years from separation hmm. to apply for property matters but oh. uh, for divorce to go for divorce you should have okay. been separated for 12 months okay 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 yeah. um majorly what we can see um, the difference over here that there's a process of mutual law, uh, divorce in india there's a process of contested divorce uh usually we see that mutual divorce process is way easier but once an individual is going in the area of contested divorce it takes years and years at least 3 to 4 years uh, things go unsettled and um, what i can learn from your uh, understanding is that things are done on the timeline and eventually there are certain limitations to settle out uh, things in the area of uh, property law uh, which can be done as well as in terms of parenting rights can be governed at, at any stage of the uh, marriage right so 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 adding to these 
what we usually see over here are the maintenance laws which are very much applicable because understanding the socioeconomic condition of Indian women to the Australian women, what has been your experience in the maintenance law in Indian law as well as in the Australian law? Um, so you will be surprised. Okay. Spousal maintenance is a very big concept here as well. Okay. Wow. Also, it means basically, you know, there have been, there are women who, you know, quit work when they have a child okay. or because they're moving with their husbands or partners or whatever. But um, over here, there is a concept of spousal maintenance, which can be given for as long as five years after okay. separation. The only criteria for giving a spousal maintenance by the court, it's basically you make an application and the court will decide. But uh, what you need to show is that you were actually used to a lifestyle okay. during the relationship okay. that will suffer drastically if you don't get the money. But because there are other, you know, social benefits that are given by the country, okay. the, by the government, uh, it becomes a little difficult to prove that you, you are literally going to be homeless or you will not have any kind of finances to live. Okay. But yes, if you have the care of the child, if you are literally, you don't have a job, you were not working for the last many, many years, the court can grant you a spousal maintenance or de facto maintenance in either case. And it is, uh, but it is not limited to just women. It can be to men as well, whoever is the person who is seeking that. Okay. Okay. I would like to know just three simple tips. If any student is traveling to Australia, what legal rights should he or she should be aware of it? Uh, what should, student should know? As a student or just? The, the hindsight behind asking this question is there because what we are seeing and we are in terms of economic system in India, still there are lots of students who are willing to study abroad because there are opportunities. The pay is way ahead as compared to India. So, but eventually we also see that if an individual is going out of India, there are set of legal regulations which everyone should know. And once if they are knowing it prior, it will be easier for them. Yes. So the first thing is main thing is that you should know that, uh, you know, you, you can work here. There are some limited number of hours that you can work as a student. Okay. But you can work in Australia as a student. Okay. And then it is very, very important to know your uh, legal rights as an employee. Okay. There okay. is a concept of superannuation, okay. which is like a pension fund, mm -hmm. literally which is given to you as a uh, you know as you work so you should come and open your uh, superannuation account okay you should make sure that your employer is paying your superannuation okay you should not work for less than what the minimum wage is okay because if you know people can try to use the misinformation Definitely. but you should be aware of your rights the other thing is uh, maintaining your visa conditions. Most likely you will be on a visa when you come here. It is very important to know what your uh, visa conditions are and how to follow them. Okay. And as far as working as a law student in Australia, it is very important to know how the laws work instead yeah. of just knowing what they are teaching you at uni. Mm -hmm. That's of course there, but you should know how practically the system is working. Okay. What are the courses you need to go to? What are the other options that are available as a mm -hmm. student? Very important. Okay. Okay. You, uh, you stated very well. So um, as you have been practicing in the area of family law, the role of a mediation or a mediator plays a very significant role here in India. So what is the scenario of mediation? What are the role of mediators which are being played and how things are in terms of mediation, in especially in the area of family law? they're in uh, as per the Australian laws. So I, you will be again surprised to know it is way better in India. The mediation has improved oh. so much in India. When I came here, I was looking for some ADR kind of, a, you know, organization, so mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really find that many. Now there is, but in family law itself, if you're talking about family law, uh, the courts are very, very inclined to okay. see parties decide by consent rather than you know 
giving them some papers and some documents that basically are is not your story it's just some parts of your story okay. and then, then asking them to decide for you so especially in parenting matters so uh, in australia in any parenting matter that is filed to the court you also attach what is called a family dispute resolution certificate uh, which basically just means that you have to try and attempt mediation before you make an application to the court. It's possible that the other side is not, you know, coming forward or you don't want to mediate or something happens. Okay. You can then still get a certificate that says the parties were not willing to mediate. Okay. But you still need to get that certificate. Okay. Okay. And okay. increasingly, I have attended a private mediation for property settlements. Okay. When you go to court, the courts give you a mandatory conciliation conference okay. for property or mm. case assessment for parenting. So mm. they are really trying to, you know, have a decision between you two rather than bringing other people and making them decide for you. You uh, rightly stated well how things are and how, because uh, being a lawyer, I can understand as well as a real uh, relate to the realities what, what are over there and how we as a country are also improving. So getting along in the area of civil law, any glimpse about the state planning over there, state planning laws, how things are governed? So again, same thing, there are inheritance laws. Okay. If you don't have a will, inheritance laws will prevail. Okay. There are different, different categories, percentages, how much how much is the estate, how the things will be distributed. Okay. But increasingly, people are making wills. Okay. People are inclined, especially after COVID, I would say, people are thinking about what will happen to their property. Okay. And estate planning as such, people, if you have significant assets, okay. people do indulge in creating, you know, paying money to get their assets managed okay. and distributed after they die. So there are things like uh, having a will, uh, making power of attorneys for specific situations or for all situations, having a power, a power of guardianships. And also there's something called advanced health directives, which is basically uh, making decisions in terms of any health uh, surgeries or you know medical procedures for somebody. Okay. So that is a very important area as well as... Uh, a lot of uh, companies are trying and becoming, uh, you know, creating trusts for themselves. Okay. And also making testamentary trusts for their, you know, grandchildren, okay. children, other people. So that okay. is a very, very important area of law that should be, okay. you know, okay. considered. Okay. So uh, now we'll be moving towards the closing segment of our uh, series. So, uh, uh, Manvita, as you... Uh, clearly stated that uh, what were the differences in the family law in the uh, state planning how things are similar in india as well as in the australia so i will be inclined to ask you certain questions which will be very beneficial of any student who is in college not in college eventually in school and who wants to pursue his career uh, right from uh, the school days to how to take this trajectory in such a manner so it will be easier for him or her to get into an international uh, attorney space. Okay, so I think one is uh, have or, you know, look into your English skills. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Uh, you need to communicate a lot. Yeah. yeah. And it becomes a barrier if you're not able to communicate what you want to say. Yeah. So focus on your English, focus on, uh, if you want to say, come to Australia, then you have to look at the universities, the courses. If you're coming from school, you want to do a law degree in Australia. Okay. Think, look at the universities, look at the courses, look at which state you want to go to and don't just go to a state because everybody is going there. Yes. It's yes. Yes. Or yes. about how you will live there, what you will do there. Mm -hmm. And how you want to build a career and when you come here start focusing on building that career look at those law firms look at the field of law you want to practice in don't restrict yourself to saying you know uh i see a lot of people who i've spoken to who i think made the move or making the move or considering coming to australia many people tell me i only want to do commercial law oh 
And if the only answer I give is come here, see, just just because you will not get a job in commercial law does not mean that you are you know wrong or you are less or anything. Okay. You may have something else. You may find your interest in something else, or maybe just do it for you know just knowing how this law is also. So okay. you should not restrict yourself before coming to a different country and saying I will not do this or I will not do that. Consider everything, see everything. And then, of course, you will get what where you have to reach. That's not a problem. Uh, very rightly stated, uh, Manvita. And it was an enriching experience. This session was majorly focusing on the orientation of getting into international lawyer, how to become a lawyer and how to uh, conceive your uh, international uh, profession in the field of law. I hope this session will be enriching for all the students right there as well as pursuing the individuals who are who are practicing lawyer and we are looking for many more uh session with manvita especially on the technical sides of law and i hope we catch up soon thank you for watching advertalks thank you manvita